In control, finally grabbed him. He's busy all day long casting MLG. This is day two. What's your experience thus far? Well, you know, uh, as I've always done MLG as a player, so to be a commentator is really interesting because it's completely stress-free. It's fun. You're on the production side, so you get to watch all the games. Um, the hardest part has been watching each of my teammates get slaughtered. That was that really sucked. <laughs> but for me, commentating is a thrill because it's you're an entertainer and you get to just kind of be in front of people, and that's a part of what I've always wanted to do. You got some good feedback. I saw a nice comments in the thread, a nice Reddit thread. How how does it feel to be on that end of it? <laughs> well, it, it's funny you say that because it's true. Like when they when you do something to upset people or they just don't like you very much. No matter how much ignoring you do, it still hurts. You still read that and you're like, ah, that sucks. And when there's a lot of it, it really hurts. But when there's a lot of good positivity, I, I mean, i got to be honest, I've ended every night with reading those comments, going through it, and it, it lifts you up. You feel great. It, it makes you excited to go back to work and do it again. And uh, I'll, I'll ride that wave and be thankful for it, knowing that eventually I'll say something stupid. People will be upset with me. No, come on. Okay. It's a lot harder to screw up as a caster than a player. I think so. Uh, by I far, because like... If you're a player, like unless you finish really high, like 90% of players don't aren't satisfied with their tournament performance. I'm pretty sure like 99% of casters are pretty satisfied with how they do, you know. In yeah, it's it's an it's an interesting scene we're in because as a competitor, unless you're getting those high finishes, and even when you do, like I still see like Nanny will get yelled at when he loses and stuff like that, and that guy's actually won tournaments. But um, it's it's interesting how our community treats competitors because they get pretty mad at people and, and they use their results against them. Not the fact. Because I remember back in Brood War where like you'd qualify for the TSL, you'd lose in the earlier rounds, but just that you qualified, just that you gave good games, people would be like, hey, nice job, nice try. That doesn't exist in StarCraft 2. In StarCraft 2, it's more like, you didn't win, you suck, you know, you lost really hard, you must be terrible. Um, but as a, as a commentator, you put your play on the back shelf, so there's not that exposure in, in terms of like, you're not an open wound when you lose. When I lose in a tournament or something like that, people are like, well, I expected that, you're a commentator now. When Artosis gets slaughtered in GSL, they're like, you're not a player, it's fine. But when a guy sends himself to Korea and gets slaughtered, they're like, LOL, you're a white guy. And I think that's I think that's too bad. Yeah, it's kind of the standards are pretty high. Um, but at the same time, I think uh, I think they people are just not used to watching sports, man. Like, you know what it is? Like, if I, I feel like if esports fans really were sports fans and they were like Cleveland Browns fans or something for a while, you don't get a championship for like your, your lifetime <laughs> almost, you know? I'm a Seattle fan, man. I'm still yeah. waiting. Still waiting on a lot of the. Uh, the ref screwed you out on. of this. Yeah. The ref screwed you out of one. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, the the standard defense for this is, of course, the bigger the game gets, the more you're going to rope in people that have. I mean, if you go to any NFL forum, there's still those guys that are like, oh, well, such and such is such a terrible quarterback. Like, th those people Patriots exist. Patriots fans. Exactly. They exist in all sports. So it's not to say that esports has it worse or something like that. It's just that we're getting used to receiving that and ignoring it. And hopefully the game grows to a place where I can hire somebody that reads that for a living and then I just never see it ever again. <laughs> they just screen out the comments and give you yeah. the good ones? Yeah, all the good ones. Okay. Um, so, have you learned anything about these casters that you've never cast with or worked with? Um, What's the dirt? The inside? Yeah. Is there any drama? No drama. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. Like, Total Biscuit online is very different from offline. To a certain extent. He's still the same guy, but like... He's, he's actually really hilarious and really good about his dry British sarcasm. Like, I, I can say ridiculous, stupid things, and he'll just be like, yeah, right, and like move on, and then fire back another joke. And it makes the commentary seem really cohesive, and it's really nice to do. When you're he's with a seasoned, that's the thing. When you're with a seasoned commentator, so easy. You're like riding on their coattails, is what I feel like. Like, I don't have to say something that funny, but he'll make it funny, and then I get some of the credit, and I, I like that. It's really nice. And uh, I guess putting out like eight hours of content a day will do that to you, I guess. Yes. He you has. Like in control yeah. YouTube? Uh, in control, I mean, that's the kind of cool thing, too. I, everyone wants to eventually go somewhere with that. I'm not going to be able to. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to grow myself into something, so I'd like to do YouTube eventually, and if I'm friends with guys that have a million subscri subscriptions I think uh, that might help who, who knows yeah yeah and um, Total Biscuit I feel like um, he's he's his wife owns a team uh, what, do you, what do you how do you think they're doing and what, what do you think their their you know process is like they, they're completely new you know yeah. like they're doing all this new stuff well I've listened to all their interviews on like Chan Man's climbing the ladder um, I like their little joke segment on the pulse like They've done a good job of going out there and acquiring the team that they feel comfortable with. Like in, in each step of the way, they they kind of had a personal relationship with all of them. Like they either stayed at their house and they learned who they were, um, or they talked to their players and their players were friends with them. They didn't just go out and pursue like a top player. They pursued a family almost. And with the exposure that Husky, Total Biscuit, and Jenna can provide for them, 
all the makings are there. So I, I wish them the best of success. I'm, I'm really happy because you and I both know the scene needs more strong, good teams doing it right. And I think Axiom has a good chance to do that. They are all Korean, so that's, gonna, that's a little bit of a different flavor. But as long as they do it right, they publicize those guys, and they give them the best uh, opportunity to win, everyone should be happy. Could you imagine how lucky those Koreans must feel? Honestly. Because they, I think they got, like, iPads for Christmas or something. Did they really? Yeah. Those, wow. Um, so they must have been Alex, like... are you listening? <laughs> they, got, they got iPads? That's yeah. really nice. So, because like they, they were on teams that were like gonna fail, yeah. pretty much, or and did then, fail. Yeah, and then all of a sudden it's like, never mind. You are now in like one of the best conditions there are in Korea. That's just pretty cool. Yeah, Je I mean, Jen is legitimately, by the way, one of the nicest, best people in esports. And I know I've said that about a few people, but I'm lucky enough to be around him. Jen is amazing, and, and yeah. those guys are lucky to be working for she's, her. She's, she's nice, but she's. Ruthless when it matters, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. you have to. You have to be in esports, and I think that's something that everybody knows. I mean, you look at a Victor Goosens or Alex Garfield, people can say can see the nice part of them, but I wouldn't want to be on the negotiating opposite side of uh, Nazgul or, or Garfield. Like, they're they're brutal, they'll go for you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and you know, this tournament, a lot of Terrans winning, so we'll just switch gears a little bit. Um, as a commentator, do you find yourself even like pulling for the Protoss or Zerg when they're playing against Terran? You know, um, my tier would be like EG, Foreigners, and then Good Games. If an EG guy wins terribly all tournament long, I'm totally okay with that. If a Foreigner beats Koreans epically, but they're not necessarily Good Games, I'm okay with that too. And then after that, I just want Good Games. So a few of these series were like real 3-0s, 3-1s, they weren't that great. But then conversely, there were some other series that were really good, like Ghost User lost 1-3, but he played beautifully, and I thought he gave Bomber a really good run for his money. And Bly um, almost took two Bly. games off Flash, yeah. Late at night against Flash, really nice play. So I, I want the more good games at this point in time. And uh, are you going to plan on doing this more, or uh, are you going to keep going as a player more? Would you rather be here as a caster or a player? I think I'd rather be a player, or excuse me, commentator. Whoop, a little bit of a slip there. I think last year was my final hurrah as a player first, commentator second, where I would absolutely try to qualify for a tournament, play in the tournament, and only if all that failed, I would then commentate. At this point in time, my time split up so so far and differently that I still play. I still play five to eight hours a day. StarCraft's the only game I spend all my time with, uh, for the most part. But it's not enough, and I'm getting older, and I need to support my family or my small family as it is right now. But I need to be I need to be building a career, and playing is not going to be it. So I need to be focusing on the future. Well, you know, uh, there's. I'm sure uh, that's a very realistic thing to do. Uh, I would say that a lot of haters probably like, well, you couldn't make it. But, you know, there's no shame in that, honestly. The scene, not a lot of foreigners win. It's just how it goes. And uh, I think uh, a lot of people don't, like, uh, especially the EG haters, don't understand uh, the value you bring into a lot of things. So I hope hope that goes well for you. And uh, do you have any, you know, like, plans coming up for uh, casting events in the future? Yeah, well, I wouldn't want to steal the thunder. I have a couple gigs already lined up. Um, really nice ones, really big ones. Something I've done in the past that I'll keep doing that people know about. Um, but just on your point, like, people can call it a failure about my career, in too, and that's fine. I didn't win tournaments, but um, I, I went to different places in the world. I won some matches. I competed. I had fun. I stood in front of audiences, and they cheered for me. I, I made fans, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm a better person because I was a player. I don't, I wouldn't have, I don't know who I would have been, but I wouldn't have liked myself as much if I would have immediately jumped out of playing and just jumped into commentating because it's the easier path. I like that I gave it as hard of a go as I did at playing. And if you want to call me a failure for trying, that's fine by me, but at least I tried. Okay, cool. Um, so you had, a, you had a bit of a break. Cots went down. What did you guys do during the break? We suffered. We suffered big time. Um, it's, it's funny. The only other time I've ever done that was when I got married in December. And at least with that, I knew I had to do that. I was like, well, there's no telling Anna that I'm going to go and go play some StarCraft now. So I had that. But in this, it was just like... I played XCOM again, and I totally planned on just doing that for like an hour and a half, but of course that ended up on a day binge where I played it for like 13 hours straight. Then I beat it again, so I was done. I played Metal Gear Revengeance, which was like an eight-hour game, and that was awesome, but very short. And then I found Supernatural, the television show, so I watched a whole bunch of that. What was that about? I've never seen that show. It's like a... Stump me. It's good. It's, it's like a... People compare it to the X-Files, but it's like... It's not. It's a... Uh, Give me some synopsis. It's like the Brothers Grimm modern day. They okay. both they go around fighting monsters and right. they're chasing their dad. It's pretty cool. And uh, you and Anna both hosting this event. Your cat commentating. She's on stage. They're like a esports power couple. 
Um, you guys got any plans for little in controls in the future? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I actually have already named my first son, but I can't tell you because it's so awesome. Okay. We'll wait. Come but on. Not for a couple years. Damn it. All right, I'll tell you because I'm too excited. Okay. I've convinced her that we should do this. She's okay with it. We'll see if she actually is. I want to name my son Danger Will or Danger William. So his name, his name will be his Danger name, Will Robinson. His name is Danger. Yes. Little Danger. First man. name is yeah. Danger. Dan, Dang. No, probably not Dang, but Dan, Dan. Yeah. And what is that short for? It's like not short for Daniel. It's short for Danger. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll get. God, I wish on a my bit. dad named me Danger. Yeah, man. That's what I'm saying. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's awesome. What about what if it's a girl? I mean, some boring name. I mean, Anna's got all kinds of hippie names on her mind, like. We were actually going to name our daughter Arya, but then Dan went and did that. So, like Artosis. The, ca the character in Game of Thrones? Yes. We, that name's awesome. She's a little murderer, man. Well, we'd hope that part gets dropped off from her future, but... <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she seems pretty cool in the series. Um, do, you, do you have any siblings, by the way? Yeah. Um, a brother or sister? B both, brother and sister. Okay. Did you actually have to intimidate any sister girlfriends? Or boyfriends, right? Yeah, dude, this is a great story. I've, I've Go never ahead. heard me say this. Go ahead. Tell, tell the story. I think, well, yes. My sister is uh, 24 years old now, I think. She's 24 or 25. 24, I think. Uh, when we were growing up, when boys would call, my brother did awesome stuff. Like, one time, a boy was sitting with us. We played, like, Monopoly. Is your brother as large as you? Bigger. He's bigger than Holy I am. Holy crap. He's 6'4". Yeah. Jesus. I don't know. It's, I'm really lucky that I didn't pick on him too bad when we were growing up. Or he doesn't remember as much as I did do. But... Carol, like the boy was sitting there, we're playing games. Colby would let a fart rip, just, just, boom, it's out there. And then he would, without skipping a beat, look at her and go, "Caroline, we have a guest." And my sister has porcelain white skin, so whether she did it or not, which obviously she didn't, she turned beet red. And it doesn't matter what you say at that point in time, because now it looks like you did. So she's, she's just, ah, uh, like mortified. But my favorite one was one time. It wasn't actually a boyfriend; it was a girlfriend lady friend that's a girl I don't know she's not a lesbian anyways she called hey is Caroline here yeah she's out back Go, you know she's just out hanging out there she was I told this chick she was in the woods behind her house my mom's doing laundry up in her bedroom and she sees our uh, Caroline's friend like sifting through bushes looking for Caroline in the woods when Caroline's just in her bedroom just chilling so after 20 minutes they went out and got her and brought her back in you were trolling before uh oh, yeah. before it was cool I've always trolled yeah so if you do have a daughter and you name her whatever you're gonna have to fend off the guys. Yeah. They, if, if she ends up looking like Anna, you're going to have to fend them off when she's a teenager. What are you going to do? You're going to have a gun or, um, or what? You know, I'm not a big believer in guns. I'll probably just do things like like cook a live pig in front of them, like the whole process, like invite them over for dinner, gut it, but like, but make eye contact <laughs> the whole time where okay. I'm like carving up this pig. Uh-huh. And they'll and be like, you know, they say the pig's the closest thing to a human being and just like hold its innards in it. And, yeah. That'd be good. Are, are, uh, are your kids going to date Bryce's kids? No. <laughs> no? no it, I, believe, I believe in a strong genetic future. Okay. <laughs> That's fucked up. He doesn't watch these things. It's totally okay. fine. All right. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, I mean, we talked a little bit. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Um, no, not I mean, do you? No, not really, man. I... Uh, I don't really want to talk about that much StarCraft. I'm, I'm kind of cool with it. So. You guys are way up on the Dota. I'll just go ahead and say that I've been watching a lot of Dota, loving yeah, it. Yeah. Um, I have not played a single game. I've only played one game of LoL. But I think the, the, I'll put this out there, see what people think. I think the commentators for Dota are better, in my opinion. Just for me. I yeah. like the, their commentating style. Who have you watched? Well, Icy and Draskal I really yeah, like yeah, a lot. Yeah. Icy is a radio voice. Dude, his voice is insane. It's actually ridiculous. It's like a Kevin Knock, only somehow even smoother, I feel like. Knocky, yeah, rather. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Hopefully, MLG picks up Dota, and then we can have the Liquid and EG teams play. And then it'll be, like, even more rivalry. You guys ever going to get a, a LOL team? I don't know, man. I don't think so. I think, um, I mean, I'm not going to rule out anything in the future, but, you know, that's, that's Victor's. Alex, that's a smart answer than Alex gave. Yeah, he was Victor's, that question, Victor's decision. And a lot of teams are, you know, they're expensive, man. Yeah. That's the biggest market there is. So, you know, yeah. So you guys definitely made a splash with yours. We're really happy with him. I, Snoopy is like, he was born to be an EG guy. I, and, and he's got such, I don't know, I respect the crap out of him. He's just a really good leader. And he's got that accent. Yeah. 
Whoa. people hitting on him all the time because of the accent. He's an attractive young man with a good accent. Those Brits, man, it's actually stupid, by the way. I, we live with the Muslim. We get to watch them walk in a restaurant. And I'm like, all right, what do you guys, you know, I've already done this joke. But it's like, it's actually real. You see the girl's eyes turn to him and go, British, say, say another thing. And they're like, oh, lovely, darling. And they're like, err. Yeah. It's weird. It's Everyone's weird to watch. Prince William yeah. all of a sudden. And you know the Muslim's the opposite of Prince William. Uh, not at fl- yeah, yeah. I mean, we've all seen that screenshot. Which one? The one with the boobs. They oh. had a screenshot? You mean his, his uh, web search? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good. And he He's, was completely like, just, yeah, I'm totally of okay course. putting that out there, yeah. by the way. The guy, Whatever. like, I'm a big fan of bulldogs. He's a huge fan of boobs, man. Boobs are great to him. I mean, they're good to all of us, but to him, they are the bee's knees. Like a, he's like a monger, boob monger. If he could hoard boobs, he would. If he could collect them and, and just, if they were detachable and he had a collection of boobs, he would. Okay. I'm happy we got that into the interview. Yes, so, I'm sure he is too. You want, you want to give your shout outs and stuff? Oh yeah, just, I mean, as always, just thanks to our team and our sponsors. Um, if you guys haven't seen that Astro video we recently did, check it out. And we're using our Razor gear. We're liking it. Ask us about it. I know you guys are Razor as well. Um, really liking the death adder that's what I'm using on the keyboard, but... Just, if you haven't been to an event, go check it out, by the way. This MLG was awesome. The audience here is cool. And when's the next one, actually? I don't know, man. It's, uh... It's not April. Is it Anaheim next? I have no idea. Anyways. I think it is, Anaheim. yeah. Make it out. It's really, really fun, and... This format's I, cool. This format's this better. This format's cool. Like, that's something we're all going to have to talk about, because it does... I don't have it confirmed, but it sounds like open bracket is gone. But it's more of, like, this is a championship. You know, you know what I... When I watch... Every match matters so much more, and when you're like Huck versus Innovation, like there's, it's like it could be either of their last matches. You know what I yep. mean? Like if they eliminate, they're out. You're not going to see them on the main stage anymore. So I feel like it brings a certain amount of attention to every yep. match. So it I, puts something really on the like line, it. which is what I like. And they, I heard they got a really good viewers. I heard they got like 120. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, they said records. They yeah, said so. That's pretty awesome, and I hope it keeps going. And good luck to you and your future events. Thank you, and. Uh, Thank you guys as well. You guys have been awesome. I've been reading the Team Liquid threads, obviously, and all the Reddit threads, and uh, it's just been really supportive. It's been, it means a lot. I read it all. Thank you.